once he started hitting his teenage years, it something happened with him. It everything just started changing after doctors started messing with his medicines here and there and changing them up and putting him on a different one and institutionalizing multiple times to correct his medicine and it it just escalated from there. He got into criminality. He became violent and dangerous. Ten times he was committed uh, for treatment uh, in mental health institutions. I believe all of them involuntarily, but by psychiatrists, by your parents, by whoever. Let's go through the escalation in his behavioural pattern. I think there was an incident in his mid-teens when he tried to set fire to the family home with everyone inside. Um, yes, sir. We, there was approximately eight people in the house asleep at the time. Uh, I just, I say about an hour, hour and a half before I came home, I was laying in my bed trying to go to sleep. Uh, just started hearing this awful noise. I couldn't figure out what it was, so finally whenever I walked outside my door, it sounded exactly like wood popping. And I went straight to the attic and discovered that the fire, well, the, yeah, the fire was in the attic. And he'd set a fire up, up to, to put the house ablaze? At that point, we didn't know it was him. It, we didn't find out it was him till about 5, 6 a.m. in the morning. He also stood over your parents holding an axe. Uh, it, it wasn't an axe. Um, at one point, my stepfather and mother ended up having to lock up every, like all the knives in the trunk of the car uh, just to protect, to protect everybody in the home. Because he was threatening to use them? He he didn't threaten to use them. It's just after they after my mom woke up with him standing over her with a, a butcher knife, it just changed from there. They didn't keep knives in the house no more. He also threatened to kill you. Yes, sir, he did. He he posted very serious threats on on Facebook directly at you, saying he was going to kill you. Yes, sir. How did that make you feel as his uh, brother? I honestly had no words for it except. Fear. That's the only thing I could think of. Is did you think he meant it? I did. If I didn't, I wouldn't have contacted the police. The family contacted police about a dozen times, I understand, for various offences of the nature that we've been discussing. Nothing was ever really done, was it? Uh, either by the mental health treatment that he had in the ten or so times he was uh, put inside those institutions by any of the police that you contacted. The, do, do you feel, let me ask you this Tim, do you feel angry that the system betrayed your family? I'm, I'm not angry. I feel like there's just a whole lot more they could have done. I feel like instead of people wanting, like, I'm going to give an example, uh, rich, famous people wanting to reach out to the victims of somebody when they really should be reaching out to people that have mental disorders and that can wind up doing something he did. I mean, President Obama called Antoinette tough, and I know that you were watching that on Anderson Cooper's show in the green room here, and you got angry because you felt that the president should be more focused on... He the he problems should, that your brother he, had. He should be more focused on trying to get to the bottom of what he can help, or well, how he can help these kids in, in today's society instead of calling somebody up just to thank them for what they did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's been thanked by hundreds and hundreds of people. Are you grateful um, to her? Just yes. I, for, I mean, for effectively, she may well have saved your brother's life and the lives of countless children in the school. Yes, sir. I, I really am. But I honestly did not see it necessary for President Obama to call her up when he could have been focusing more on what could be done to prevent things like that.